and I'm mad, but I'm a Christian. And I don't believe Satan can cast out Satan. My, my, my. I don't believe fire can put out fire. I don't believe violence can stop violence. That's the system. And I do believe in police. That if somebody shoots somebody, I want the police to handle that business. There needs to be accountability. We can't just allow folk to keep shooting young black males and then nothing is done about that and then expect for young black males to sit back and do nothing but everybody in this country ain't Christian. And you can't keep pushing people and dogging people and oppressing people and messing with people and then think they ain't gonna do something. You can't tell me how to respond when you oppress me. I'm tired of it. I'm angry. I'm tired of every day having to prove that black lives matter. I'm tired of that. Because now, the attention has been taken off black lives matter to put on blue lives matter. And I, I believe blue lives do matter. What happened in Dallas never should have happened. Those who don't know me, I work with most of these ministers and clergy and preachers and mayor and chief of police. I've argued, I've prayed, I've fought, I've worked with these police all, I've counseled them and everything else. But yo, blue lives matter, but we can't so focus on Dallas that we forget about that rule. And we forget about Minnesota. Blue lives matter. But we don't have to say a lot about Blue Lives Matter. Look at all the love that has gone to Dallas. Look at all the support that has gone to Dallas. Look at all the encouragement that has gone to Dallas. Look at all the, the officers that surround those folk because they got shot that have gone to Dallas. Think if that same kind of love have gone out to the young black males who've been gunned down. And they have the same love, support, and encouragement. Maybe we wouldn't even have to be in here tonight. Blue lives do matter. But I'm not going to be blinded by the fact that black lives matter too. I've been involved with leaders in our community and across this country trying to figure out what we need to do, what we need to say, how do we need to deal with this. And one person I called was Dr. Frederick Douglass Haynes III in Dallas, Texas. And I said, God, what are we supposed to be saying about this? What, what, he says, because I said, now what happened in Dallas if we're not careful? It's going to blind us with what happened in Baton Rouge and what took place in Minnesota. He said, and he's in Dallas. Yeah. Yeah. And he said, well, I'm trying to help our community to understand that we need bifocals. When somebody is wearing bifocals to correct their vision, to help them to see life better, with bifocals, you can see up close and at a distance. And yes, we need some bifocal vision that we can see up close what happened in Dallas. We don't need violence on top of violence. We don't need people going after the police department like that. We don't need that. We need to see up close, but we need some bifocals. We need to see at a distance. Because in the distant history of the United States of America, if you got your bifocal vision on, this is a country that has a history of killing black males, brown males. From, from Middle Passage, to slavery, to lynchings, to, to police action shootings on young black males who haven't done a daggone thing. Well, we have a history, you, know, you got to keep your black vocals on. I thank God for you praying about what happened in Dallas, but don't forget our history of what has happened in the past and the distant future on what's going to happen because y'all ain't going to keep killing us like this and we ain't going down like that. Get your bike on. Because in the distant future, because I'm agreeing with the black female police officer in Ohio. Uh -huh. He said, some of these officers don't need to have the uniform on. Some police don't need to be police. I thank God for our police department. I have worked with them. I've 
plan to keep working with them. Uh, some police don't need to be police. You can't just come up in our apartments, take our kids, throw them into the wall, because they ain't got an ID on them at home. Some police don't need to be police. You can't just keep killing our young black males. Some police don't need to be police. And I'm with the governor of Minnesota. Had it been white, that never would have took place. Some police don't need to be police. If we're going to guess, we're going to pray for Dallas. But we're not going to forget that Rouge. We're not going to forget Minnesota. We are not going to forget what this country has done to us for the longest we've been in this country. And we want y'all to understand we ain't through yet. Because here's the deal. Sometimes somebody has to die before a transformation can take place. Tomorrow, tomorrow I'm preaching at all three of my services when Mary and Martha got mad at Jesus in John, in John chapter 11. Yeah. If you had been here, Jesus, yeah. That's what they're saying. my brother would not have died. That's what they didn't have an issue with him dying, but if you had been here, he would not have had to die like this. And that's what I'm saying. Jesus, if you had been here, our brothers wouldn't have to die selling one cigarette at a time. Our brothers wouldn't have to die because they got pulled over by the cause of a taillight. If you had been here, our brothers would not have died. But Jesus said, I'm glad I wasn't here. Because now you get ready to see my glory in a way you've never been able to see it before. Because sometimes somebody has to die before a transformation can take place. And I don't know why y'all ain't saying amen. Because Jesus had to face social injustice. And Jesus was mistreated when he was a young child because of his gender and who he was. But I'm telling you, when they went on with that social injustice and locked Jesus up for something he shouldn't have been locked up for. And put him in prison for something he shouldn't have been put in prison for. And beat down by the, by the police of that day. Then they made a mistake. <laughs> they laid him on that cross. But that's when they messed up. And they began to pull that cross up. Oh, y'all messing up now? I know you're lying on him, but you're messing up now. They began to pull up that. I know y'all put him in prison, but you're messing up now. I know you whipped him all night long, but you're messing up now. Because Jesus said, if I, if I be lifted up, I'll draw a man unto me. Sometimes somebody's got to die to bring transformation into this country. So my prayer is, God, take that tragedy in that room. Take that tragedy in Minnesota and turn it into transformation and turn it into triumph so that the United States can finally become the United States. In Jesus' name, amen.